I'm really proud to be a cop. I wanted to be in police work since I was a kid. I'm real serious about my work and my responsibilities. Sir, are you aware of our requirement that you have to wear your seatbelt when operating your vehicle? But it's funny, this business about safety belts. Sometimes there's a resistance to using them. I feel it myself. The three-point uh, seatbelt system, in my opinion, gets in the way a lot. Sometimes it's easy to rationalize not wearing belts. You know, coming up with excuses, when if we thought about it, we'd see how dumb that kind of thinking really is. I mean, what does it take to put a belt on? Three seconds? In my job, I see what happens when you don't wear a seatbelt. You know, what goes on in the streets is a tragedy, and the truth is our chances of being in an accident are a lot greater than the average person's because we spend so much time on the road. And we're on the road at night, you know, when the more drunks are out, and, and because we're stopped on the road so much, there's always a good chance we'll just get rammed in the rear, and we're more liable to be distracted than the average driver because our attention is divided. And a pursuit. Boy, is that ever the time when you want to feel in control of your vehicle. And, you know, sliding around on your seat is not the way to do it, much less being thrown from the car or, you know, going through the windshield if you hit something. Well, as cops, we're trained to see danger. We look for it. I know I'm alert to it in just about everything I do. So why is it hard to see the dangers we face just by being in a car? Maybe we wouldn't normally think of our vehicle as a danger to us, but it can be. All those things that assist us in doing our jobs can end up killing or injuring us if we're not belted in. It's such a simple thing, but it's as important as our vests or our guns. It may be the best shield we have against the risks we face in our work. What a dumb way to die or be disabled, just because we don't do something as simple as buckling down. I'm positive in my mind that had I not had my uh, safety belt on, I would have been seriously injured or killed because of the uh, violent uh, action of the car once it was struck by the other vehicle. The other vehicle pulled out in front of me, I struck that vehicle which in turn caused me to strike a telephone pole. When my vehicle came to rest, the front end was on fire. I unbuckled my seat belt, exited the vehicle through the driver's window. The vehicle exploded right after I exited the vehicle. And I swerved to the left to avoid this car, and he struck me in on my passenger side, knocked me off of the highway, and of course I lost control, and I flipped my car over three times, and it threw everything that was in my patrol car out. All the windows were busted, and had I not been wearing my safety belt, I would have went out also. There's no doubt in my mind. I hit a concrete culvert, totally destroyed the front of my car, flew 74 feet through the air, tore the steering wheel out of the brackets, unbuckled the seat belt, and got out. I was in the center of an intersection when I was struck broadside by another vehicle coming down a hill. And the force of the collision uh, pushed both cars into the median divider. My car was thrown out of line and uh, smashed in the right front. I got out the back window and went to see if the other person was all right. looking at pictures of your past life when your present life has changed so drastically. He says it's like looking at someone else, not him. Sometimes he just stares at the photographs endlessly. Other times it'll be months and he won't look at them at all. And he gets upset with the kids if they do.
the accidents affected our lives in so many ways. There's this real deep sense of loss. Oh, he's still a part of our lives, but it's so different. <laughs> He can't play with the kids now. They miss that so much. David, our, our son, he tries so hard to understand, but I know he's a little resentful. Because all the other dads, they do father and son things, you know, team sports and things together. And his dad can't. And our relationship, um, his and mine, It's strained most of the time, you know, emotionally and physically, because he's just got this lack of confidence in himself. You know, we joined the force together. We had such dreams about how we build our personal and professional lives side by side, and we did for a long time. But now I'm the sole breadwinner. And there's the added financial strain of his being totally disabled and with reduced benefits because he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. The guys at the station used to come by a lot at first, but now he hardly sees them at all. Oh, they care, sure, but, um, you know, after a while you sort of forget. Besides, I know that seeing him makes them feel uncomfortable. Hey, it could happen to any one of them, right? So they don't like to be reminded that they're vulnerable, too. You know, it amazes me when I think about it, how there was never a time that we went out together as a family that we didn't make sure every one of us had our seatbelts on. He always told the kids, he said, you gotta wear your seatbelts. And I thought he was wearing his belt that day in his own cruiser. I, I mean, I knew he was. I had to see him. Why didn't he wear his belt that day? Why? Hello. My name is Vivian Eni, and I'm national president of Concerns of Police Survivors, COPS for short. COPS helps law enforcement families recover from sudden, often violent, line of duty death. But we do more than that. We're proactive. We want to do all we can to keep as many families as we can from joining our organization. In the last 10 years, over 1,500 law enforcement officers have died in the line of duty. 50% 50 are accidental. The leading cause of accidental death is car crashes. Please enforce the seatbelt laws in your state, but enforce it first through example. I'm a member of this organization because I'm a survivor. The hardest thing I ever did was to take my two daughters into that hospital room where their dad lay dead on the stretcher. Don't let that happen to your family because you forgot to buckle up. Remember, before you turn on the key, listen for the click. Buckle up. Your family's counting on you. The bond that links your true family is not one of blood, but of respect and joy in each other's lives. Rarely do members of one family grow up under the same roof. Yes, in foreign vehicle. As police officers, we are part of a special fraternity of men and women. We have made a commitment to ourselves, to our families, to our communities, and to each other. You are aware Sarah had a baby yesterday. Ashley Nicole. Checked in at 221 at 1627 hours, seven pounds, nine ounces. I understand both are doing well in the hospital. 
Part of this commitment is a responsibility to act fairly and with concern for the effects of our actions on others. It is also a commitment to the well-being of our fellow officers. In our relationships, there is humor, companionship, sharing, and a very special responsibility. We're just one big family. We look out for each other. We take care of each other on and off duty. What is your feeling about safety belts? I rely on my fellow officers and they rely on me. My safety belt helps me to keep control of my vehicle at all times. As an officer, we drive 4,000 pound machines capable of causing serious injury or death if we are involved in an accident. I can remember when I first became a police officer watching the veteran officers and observing how they went about their duties, trying to draw from their experience and develop methods of my own. The one constant I got from all of these officers was the fact that we have to take care of each other. And in my book, that includes wearing your safety belt. Any new officer that gets in my car is going to hear it right up front. You've got to wear your safety belt. It's your best protection from injury while you're in this car. Some veteran officers are going to project a negative image towards safety belts. We can't let this undermine our efforts to take care of each other. If we as veteran officers don't encourage, insist that these new officers wear their safety belts, we're letting them down, ourselves down, and projecting a negative image to the public we serve. No man is an island, said poet John Donne. Any man's death diminishes me. As police officers, we are members of a closely knit group of men and women. The loss of any one of our group diminishes the whole. There are many precautions we take to ensure our own and each other's safety. Wearing safety belts is one of these, because simply stated, safety belts protect our lives. I still wake up at night. I still have nightmares about that crash. My buddy died in that crash. That day I didn't insist he wear his belt. I think about it all the time. God, I wish I had that moment back to do over again. Don't forget to buckle up. police officer? Mm, about five years. You like it, don't you? Well, yeah, I like it a lot. This new book I got's about police. Oh, really? Let me see. Hey, that's interesting. Officer Bill learns a lesson. <laughs> Let's take a look. In a town, there was a police station where many police worked. They worked hard at their jobs and all did their work very well. And one day, a new police officer came to work at the station. The other officers were glad to have him as part of their team. But as time went by, the officers began to notice something different about the rookie, and it worried them. Finally, they said to him, you've got a problem. Why, he asked. Because you don't wear your seat belt when you're in your car. But, said the rookie, I must get in and out of my car at least 20 times a day. I don't have time to fasten my belt that many times. It's uncomfortable, and my badge and leather catch in it. And besides, I'm a good driver. be a good driver, said the officers, but there are a lot of bad drivers out there and you can't control what they do. And what about a breakdown, bad weather, or a blowout? You still may crash and wearing a seatbelt can save your life. <laughs> 
or keep you from being seriously hurt. Look, said the rookie, I'm not stupid. I wear my belt when I'm responding to an emergency or in pursuit, but I don't need it when I'm traveling at low speeds. The fact is, said one of the officers, that more than eight out of every ten crashes occur at speeds under 40 miles an hour. A vehicle will stop or slow down if it hits another object, but if you're not buckled down, you will continue to move at that same speed. The rookie started to look more and more uncomfortable as the other officers talked. And finally he said, well, maybe you're right, but what about the fact that I need to be able to respond quickly in an emergency? That's my first duty. Like when I need my gun, I need it fast. A seat belt just gets in the way. One of the officers said, your chances of being injured or killed in a crash are much greater than being shot. Besides, with training and practice, you can learn belt use techniques just like the other things you've been trained to do. I remember how I used to feel about seat belts. I didn't want to be trapped inside my car. I felt I'd rather be thrown free. But the truth is, if you're thrown from your car in a crash, you're four times more likely to be killed or injured. Who really wants to go through the windshield? or be thrown through the air and crushed by his own car or someone else's. The officer continued, less than one half of one percent of injuries are caused by fire or being trapped in a car covered by water. We have to remember that seat belts can keep us from being knocked unconscious and this increases our chances of escape. Finally, the rookie had to agree with what the other officers were saying. He began wearing his seatbelt whenever he went out in his patrol car. The men and women at the station are still working hard and doing their jobs well. But now, every one of them is working more safely. It was pouring down rain, the road was real slick, and really I wasn't expecting to have an accident. I went down the embankment, struck a tree. Um, as soon as the car struck the tree, I could feel the seat belt uh, snatch real tight on my upper part of my chest, holding my body back into the seat. But had I not been wearing my seat, uh, I probably would have just folded over into the steering wheel and it would have uh, crashed me to the top of the roof. My speed at the time I was traveling when I hit the culvert was approximately 80 miles an hour. As the car was being flipped over, I felt the seat belt tightening around my, my shoulder and holding me in. I had a sprained right foot due to my kicking the door open. But if I wouldn't have uh, worn the safety belt, there's no telling what would have happened. Like I said, I could have been paralyzed or uh, I could have died. It's not only your life, but it's also affecting the citizen, it's also affecting the people who love you. You know, so you need to ask yourself, what do you want to do? Do you, you want to stay healthy or do you want to be disabled or dead? That's the bottom line. You wear your seatbelt, don't you?
society operates on the basis of numerous myths. As law enforcement officers, we are also affected by these myths. Sadly, the myths which relate to the use of safety belts cost the lives of thousands of men, women, and children every year. Each year in America, 17 million Americans are involved in traffic crashes. 47,000 will die this year. That's 129 a day. Safety belts are not just an individual issue, they're a social issue. Wearing a belt can help you can keep control of your vehicle. Also can help prevent injuring or killing someone else in your car. I was on Highway 150, this car slammed on brakes in front of me. It just dead stopped in the middle of the road and I proceeded to come up behind the car and I slammed on my brakes and as I did, I slid across the center line and that's when another car hit me head on. A lot of us don't see what really might happen to people we give seatbelt tickets to. The seatbelt just jerked me back in my seat, this one big jerk. And that's when I thought, oh God, I was so glad I had my seatbelt on. The main reason she had that seatbelt on was because when she got in that car, to leave school that, that afternoon when she had an accident, that uh, she thought about that citation and knew she couldn't afford another one. And she went ahead and put that seatbelt on. I couldn't thank that cop enough for giving me that seatbelt ticket. I seen him in the hospital. He came and seen me in the hospital. And uh, I thanked him. I said, you could not have given me a better ticket than this seatbelt ticket, because it did save my life. That's really not a good reason for not writing the ticket. Two of my own children were as active as any that I've ever seen. And not only did they grow accustomed to being in their child's seats, now that they're older, the seat belt is automatically a habit with them. Have you thought about the parents who you don't want to inconvenience with this ticket, but how are their lives going to be devastated if something happens to their child as a result of their carelessness or their negligence? And have you thought about the share in the responsibility that you'll have if you fail to take enforcement action when you see a violation of that sort? Stolen vehicle report, 120 West 81st Street, Tobacco 31 clear. 1389, no one on the suspect. 1385, clear. The fact is, that vehicle crashes are killing more people in their communities than anything else. As police officers, we are in a position to prevent many of these deaths by enforcing belt laws. The enforcement of secondary laws is something we police officers do every day. Citations for license, registration, and DWI violations are often a result of our secondary enforcement efforts. Many states with secondary safety belt enforcement laws have achieved high use rates through strict and consistent enforcement efforts. It really comes down to a question as to your level of commitment. If you want to enforce your secondary safety belt law, then you will. If you don't, then you are negligent and your responsibility to protect the public you have sworn to serve. As police officers, we're faced daily with plea bargain situations, reductions, and dismissals. There's no doubt that a final disposition in a court case, whether criminal or traffic, has an impact on police officers' morale and work habits. However, we have a responsibility to enforce all laws, including traffic laws, like safety belt and child restraint violations, regardless of the court's decisions. Be satisfied with the fact that you did your part by simply issuing the citation and helping to create the perception of risk in the public's mind and possibly prevent an injury or death in the future. Ma'am, this is a driver's license and seat belt check. Can I see your driver's license, please? I think police departments should have better things to do than to give seat belt tickets. Why don't they, do, why don't they go and get drunk drivers?
I ran a red light and I had my children with me and I didn't have one of them in a safety seat and I didn't have them buckled in and the officer was kind enough not to give me a moving violation but to ticket me for the fact that the children weren't in a seat belt. And it was the fact that that occurred that, that made me wear my seat belt. A synonym for myth is fiction or falsehood. The falsehoods regarding seatbelt enforcement must not keep law enforcement officers from using one of the most effective means we have of guarding the safety of the citizens in our communities.